The GPU market, it sucks right now, but damn it if I haven't been looking for an affordable solution to get some of you up and running with the latest games at 1080p. And I think I just found it. The best part? I'm not just going to tell you to settle for a Ryzen APU. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped and the Performance Package 4.0, which includes everything you need to keep your yard looking its best. Having the right tool for the job is paramount, as you're not going to get the results you want with the wrong equipment. The Lawnmower 4.0 is IP67 rated, so you can look your best whether it's rain or shine. Plus, with its skin safe technology, you won't end up tilling instead of just trimming. You'll also get the Weed Whacker for ear and nose hair, Crop Preserver to keep your tomatoes dry, and the Crop Reviver to keep them cool. Go to manscaped.com slash craftcomputing to get 20% off, free international shipping, and two additional free gifts. That's manscaped.com slash craftcomputing. And remember, your balls will thank you. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Right in front of Rambo here is the NVIDIA Tesla M40, an enterprise GPU released all the way back in 2015, and possibly the savior for new PC builders everywhere. The Tesla M40 is a Maxwell-based GPU, featuring 3072 CUDA cores on the GM200 GPU core, a chip that's also used in the Quadro M6000 and the GTX Titan X. Like other NVIDIA Tesla-based GPUs I've tested here on the channel, there are no display outputs on the M40, making it a compute-only card. But like I showed off on the Tesla K80, you still can use the card for GPU rendering, including playing games. But there's one key difference that sets the M40 apart from other enterprise GPUs I've tested in the past, and that's the clock speeds. You see, in the case of the K80, while there may have been more CUDA cores than any other Kepler-based GPU ever made, they ran at nearly half the speed of cards from the GeForce lineup. So while the GTX 690 may have been capable of speeds above 1 GHz, the K80 was limited to just 565 MHz. Even with some BIOS hacking, the best I could do was around 850 MHz, which didn't exactly set the world on fire, even with 2500 CUDA cores and 12 GB of video memory. The Tesla M40, on the other hand, not only matches the clock speeds from the Quadro M6000, it is actually faster than a GTX Titan X, with a boost clock of 1114 MHz versus just 1089, meaning there might actually be some usable performance inside this card, while also being a bit too old to be profitable to mine crypto with. Score Memory on the M40 is slightly slower than the Quadro or Titan counterparts, at just 3000 MHz versus 3300 and 3500 MHz respectively. Another huge plus is we can actually overclock the Tesla M40 with tools like MSI Afterburner. While the GPU clock only gave us a slider to go up to 1226 MHz, I was able to bump the memory up to 3400 MHz, closing the gap with the GTX Titan X. And I'm sure if I played around with the Maxwell BIOS editor, I could get even more performance out of it. The test PC for today is going to be an Intel i9-10850K 10-core 20-threaded system with a full 32GB of DDR4-3600 memory. There's also going to be a 1TB NVMe drive on board, as well as the integrated Intel 630 GPU. Keeping things cool will be the Arctic 420mm all-in-one liquid cooler and a 75mm blower fan on the Tesla M40 thanks to a 3D printed adapter. While the blower fan is far from quiet, the card also stayed well below 60 degrees Celsius throughout testing. I might be taking a look at some alternative cooling solutions for enterprise GPUs shortly, as running them here in my office is starting to drive me a bit nuts. If you watched my previous video with the Tesla K80, you'll know it takes just a simple register tweak to enable Windows GPU scheduling, allowing you to connect a monitor to your onboard graphics and render games using a high-power headless card like the Tesla M40. If you need a little guidance on that, I will have instructions down in the video description. One thing I may have been incorrect on last time, though, was needing to set every single game executable to use the NVIDIA GPU. Windows seems to be able to handle that part on its own, though I did have to configure a game or two manually, and we'll talk about that shortly. For now, let's get into the performance testing. Starting with our synthetics and 3 d Mark Firestrike, the Tesla M40 scored a 14,744 overall and a graphics score of 15,655. However, overclocked, we managed to push that all the way to 16,371 and 17,270 for almost an 11% improvement. We see a similar story in 3 d Mark Time Spy, with a stock score of 5475 and a graphic score of 4952. When overclocked, both of the scores are up almost 11%, with a score of 6026 and 5485. 
But as we all know, synthetic score improvements may not always translate into real-world gains. However, in this case, every single game saw a significant stat improvement of right around 10%. Starting with Doom Eternal at stock speeds, we see 103 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 66 and a 0.1% low of 59. Overclocking jumped us up around 10%, with an average of 112 FPS and a 0.1% low of just 58. Project Cars 3 showed no signs of slowing this trend down. Do you, do you see what I did there? At stock speeds, we averaged around 120 FPS, with a 0.1% low of 75. Overclocking the card saw improvements to 132 FPS with a 0.1% low of 78, so only a 4% improvement overall, but still an improvement nonetheless. Sticking with racing titles, let's go over to Wreckfest, where we saw an average of 111 frames per second on average with a 0.1% low of 68. Overclocking the Tesla M40, we actually saw greater than a 10% improvement, jumping all the way to 123 FPS on average with a 0.1% low of 78. Cyberpunk 2077 has a reputation for melting graphics cards, and that is certainly the case here with the lowest scores of the day. However, the game was still very much playable. At stock speeds, we saw an average of 47 FPS and a 0.1% low of 34. Overclocking saw those scores improve to 51 FPS on average with a 0.1% low of 36. Again, we saw greater than a 10% improvement here. And while we didn't hit 60 FPS on average, it's still far and away a better experience than any of the game's console releases. Red Dead Redemption 2 is again one of the most demanding PC games to come out in the last number of years. At stock speeds, the Tesla M40 had no problem with this game, averaging 54 FPS on average with a 0.1% low of just 36. Once overclocked, we were able to get that all the way up to a 60 FPS average with a 0.1% low of 38. Not too shabby for a game running ultra textures and high settings on everything else. Hitman 3 did see our average frame rate improve around 11% from 96 to 107. However, we didn't see those same gains at the 0.1% low, moving from just 66 FPS to 69. And finally, rounding us out is Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2, with the biggest improvement of the day. Stock speeds, we saw an average of 105 FPS, which is definitely not too shabby. However, we jumped over 20% to 127 FPS on average. Our 0.1% low also moved from 47 to 78. Now, I'm not sure why this game made such a large jump, but I will certainly take those results. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I did have a litany of issues getting the Tesla K80 to play nicely with some games, especially full screen applications. The M40, on the other hand, was pretty much smooth sailing the entire time. There was only one instance in which I had to define an application to use the higher power graphics card, and that was in Wreckfest. Left to its own devices, Windows refused to let Wreckfest even know that the Tesla M40 was there. However, a quick tweak in the graphics settings and the Tesla M40 was rendering just fine. A lot of my issues with the Tesla K80 were likely due to the fact that graphic switching was a new technology near the end of the Kepler generation, and not well supported. By the time Maxwell rolled around, multi-GPU solutions were becoming pretty common in laptops. Performance-wise, the Tesla M40 is likely in competition around the GTX 980 Ti, GTX 1070, or the AMD 5600 XT, so it's definitely not going to blow the doors off any mid-range GPU from the last couple generations, but the Tesla M40 does prove to still be a competent card for playing games at 1080p and high settings. Now this solution is definitely not for everyone, and a Maxwell-based Tesla is not going to be a substitute for a high-end current generation graphics card. But if you've been looking for any graphics card with solid gaming chops that isn't going to break your budget wide open, and don't mind doing a little tinkering to get it working, the Tesla M40 might just be a decent stopgap until GPU prices come back down. I picked up my Tesla M40 24GB model for just $260, and in fact they have a 12GB model that is down around $220, making this probably the most affordable graphics card that you can get today that you can actually play games with. Now like the Tesla K80, I did give the Tesla M40 a run at both vGPU support and GPU-P inside of Hyper-V. However, both of those solutions were essentially a no-go. Well, I shouldn't say that. vGPU did work on the Maxwell-based card, however, the GPU profiles that I got to choose from limited me to only 8GB of memory total, meaning that 24GB of memory on a card is absolutely a waste in that environment. 
It doesn't matter how much video memory you have on a graphics card, if the vGPU profiles limit you to only a single 8GB instance on a physical GPU. And that's what I ran into here. So while I could totally run up to two vGPU profiles with four gigabytes of memory each, that leaves 16 gigabytes of video memory just kind of sitting there. Seems like a waste. When it comes to GPU pair virtualization, I was able to get the Tesla M40 to recognize as a partitionable GPU, just like the Tesla K80. However, just like the Tesla K80, once I started the Hyper-V VM with the GPU enabled, all I got was a black screen and I wasn't able to do anything with it. If anyone's tinkered with those issues in the past and has a solution, please let me know in the comments below, because I would love to run the M40 through some proper virtualization tests. But for right now, it's going to have to do as just a pretty decent graphics card for a single user. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this video. If you are interested in picking up a Tesla M40 for yourself, I will have eBay affiliate links down in the video description. Go give those a look. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in buying graphics cards to test out, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. That's going to do it for me in this one, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. I wanted you to be better. Beer for today is from Montgomery Brewing. It is the Groot Slang Barrel Aged Imperial Stout, clocking in at 10.3%. There's one thing I love. It's a can that doesn't uh, blow up on my hand. And secondly, it's a barrel-aged Imperial Stout. If you change the oil on your car and it looks like this, you waited too long. All we have on the can is a Surgeon General's warning along with a brewed and bottled by Montgomery Brewing, 306 2nd Street Northwest, Montgomery, Minnesota. So if you happen to be in Minnesota, maybe check them out. Well, I'll let you know if you want to check them out. Not quite what I was expecting right off the bat. Uh, this one's hitting me a little bit sour right up front. There it's sweetening up just a little bit. Boy, that is a real dark chocolate. There's not a lot of roast in this one. There's really no, no coffee. I might be getting the slightest bit of a, of a creamy flavor in the middle, like a vanilla or a caramel or something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drink this one a little bit because uh, so far, I'm not all that impressed. I didn't know it was going to be possible for me to be disappointed by a barrel-aged Imperial Stout. Usually those words is an automatic win for regardless of what I'm having. Um, I'm not getting the traditional notes that I should be. Like I said, I'm getting a little bit of chocolate, but it's kind of being overridden by like this bittersweet chocolate right up at the beginning. I'm not getting any oak. I'm not getting any roast. I'm not getting any coffee. Uh, it's not even as thick bodied as it appeared coming out of the can. This is just kind of a, a thin, not very well developed, poor attempt at a barrel-aged Imperial. Uh, yeah, it's just not great. Yeah, this one doesn't even smell all that great. Um, it's got a very isopropyl <laughs> smell to it. I don't know if they were making hand sanitizer for 2020 and then decided to barrel-age an Imperial Stout in the same vat, but uh, that's what I'm getting. It's not horrible, but it's definitely not to the level that I wanted.